Hello and good evening. My name is Fabio Gigi. I'm the chair of the Japan Research Center here at SOAS, and it is with great pleasure that I welcome you to the last and perhaps, judging by the audience, the most illustrious um, event of the JRC and also the last one of the year. Now, our speaker tonight uh, will be known to most of you. He indeed told me that he last spoke at SOAS in 2006 in a talk that was organized by Professor Lucia Dolce, who's also here uh, tonight. Professor Josef Kiburz is a senior research fellow, now retired, uh, of the French uh, Centre National de la Recherche Scientifique and a member of the Centre de Recherche sur les Civilisations de l'Asie Orientale at the Collège de France. His PhD thesis on the religious life of a Japanese rural community was based on several years of ethnographical fieldwork in a mountain village of central Japan. He also holds a degree in ethnology and another one in Korean studies with concomitant fieldwork in Korea. During his academic career, he taught at the University of Paris-Nanterre and was guest professor at Jeonnam University in Korea, the University of Zurich and Hosei University in Japan. He also was the president of the European Association of Japanese Studies, as well as the Société Française des Études Japonaises. His repeated fieldwork in Korea, in Japan and Korea, bore on popular creeds and cults in the last few years, particularly on amulets and talismans in Far Eastern culture. So we will follow a traditional academic format uh, for tonight with the lecture first and then ample opportunity to comment and ask questions. Uh, for the people online, thank you for joining us. You can already start feeding your questions into the Q&A function as the talk uh, goes on, but you can also raise your hand afterwards and uh, we will unmute you. The talk tonight bears the title, The Talisman of Visa, Emblem of the Japanese Empire, but I understand that there has been a slight change already. So please join me now in welcoming Professor Josef Kiburz to the JRC. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. Okage, uh, <laughs> Fabio Gigi no Okage de. Um, yes, um, uh, Fabio just announced uh, a possible change in the title of um, this talk. Um, actually, uh, on the website, uh, the Ise uh, Talisman is called an emblem of Japan. Now, um, I changed the title to uh, Japan in a Talisman, which seems to me um, better to show that uh, this talisman is not only an emblem on the surface, but it is uh, a very deep um, um, axis or, or core of the Japanese soul. Mm -hmm. So of Japan as such. Now it has also a political dimension, which makes it um, uh, uh, even more important. But we, you will see that in course of the lecture. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we... Uh, oh, oh, no. um, yes, there is one other thing. Uh, the talisman, the, the term of talisman as such. Now, there is an article, uh, for example, by one of our colleagues, uh, John Bream, on uh, the same um, uh, talisman, in, uh, on, on the same Isetaima in Japanese. Um, there is the Encyclopedia of uh, Shinto Studies of the Kokugakuin, uh, which has an English um, um, version. Uh, and in both cases, there is um, the term is amulet. Mm. Uh, John Breen uses amulet, and the Shinto, um, uh, the, the the encyclopedia of the Kokugin studies has amulet. Now uh, there is for people who study, who take um, charms or, or magical um, uh, objects of this kind, uh, there is 
um, a, a clear distinction made between a talisman and an amulet. Uh, um, uh, for if I, the commonly accepted distinction uh, is stated in the the standard dictionary of folklore by uh, the uh, funk and uh, bagnals of folklore, mythology, and legend. Mm? And there um, you find this difference stated in the following terms. Um, a talisman is a wonder-working object, a charm possessing and transmitting certain qualities as opposed to an amulet, which is a passive protector or preventive charm. Mm -hmm. The amethyst worn to protect its wearer from the effects of alcohol is an amulet. I've never tried it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Aaron's rod, the magician's wand from um, uh, the magician's wand um, and transforming wand of the fairies are talismans. The active principle of the talismans clearly distinguishes it, distinguishes it from other charms, though often talisman and amulet, like in the present case, both usually small and carrying on the person of the possessor, are confused in common usage. Hmm? Okay, now uh, um, this already gives you um, some precision of what this um, uh, isetaima is, it, it is a talisman. It is not something that protects you from bad influences, but it is an active, uh, outgoing uh, power, mm -hmm. an energy, so to say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, some time ago, when, uh, can you, yes, uh, when reading Engelbert Kempfer's History of Japan, my attention was caught by the observation this German physician in the service of the Dutch East India Company made in the early 1690s in a chapter in this book in, in the history of Japan uh, called the pilgrimage to Ise, Ise, he transcribes, as he calls it. Okay, please bear with me for a rather lengthy quote. Can you, is it readable from, yes? Okay, every honest Shinja, Shinja is a believer, in other words, but in this particular case, a, a Shintoist believer, right, of the Kami uh, for Kempfer. Every honest Shinja, or every, or other, every patriot, whatever his belief, should visit this sacred site, he said, annually, or at the very least, once in his life, to show due gratitude to the God and founder of this nation. Uh, I don't know if I... Um... Okay. Okay. Um... Where was I? Should, um, or at least one should be uh, the founder of this nation. Also, cleansed by this act of all sins, of the purification, so to say, he may enter a happy state after death, or in the naive eyes of the uneducated masses, he may be blessed with bodily health, food and drink, money, clothing, children and the family. To strengthen this belief, Every visitor personally receives from the Taiyu, uh, which is a title that I will explain later, a box with a letter of indulgence called Ofarai, which receives, uh, which means great purification. Um, people who are unable to obtain this personally because of their occupation, illness, or age can buy one annually. In addition to the above Shinsha, this is the plural of uh, Shinja shin, uh, at the beginning. Mm? It's a shin, Shu is the, the group. Um, one also sees other Buddhist, so followers of the, the way of, of the Buddha, 
because they wish to claim the right to be called honest patriots. So one goes to Ise to, um, to have in the quality of an honest patriot and therefore visit this place of their founder once or several times in their lives. You have also the statement that in Ise is the, is the, found, the foundation of uh, Japan, mm? the essence of it. There are also many, uh, there are also other Buddhists who stay at home, but annually purchase the Ofarai from Ise and in addition, a letter of indulgence from their priest. Again, new quote. Pilgrims, uh, we have another. Yes. Okay, it's on the uh, slide over there. Okay. <laughs> Pilgrims wear a white brimmed traveling hat made of a plated split reed, which is uh, uh, marked with their name as well as that of their birthplace or uh, residence so that they can be identified when they suddenly die on the road. <laughs> he is uh, uh, taking all um, uh, events in account. Others wear a short white robe without sleeves over their clothes on which the, the above names are printed on chest and back. Now, what you see here, uh, I, I wasn't able to get um, a, a white uh, robe of uh, an easy pilgrim, uh, but these are the um, uh, the Namu Amida Daishi, so it was the 88 um, holy places on, on Shikoku, right? So it's a different thing, but the, 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 the um, the garment as such is uh, uh, the same, right? In its essential points. Okay. One meets several hundred of such pilgrims daily. Hmm? Now he's talking in, in 1692. If other parts of the country were visited without the pass, people would run into considerable trouble to the point of um, risking their lives, but everyday custom provides the liberty that the Ofarai serves as a good passport and is considered enough. Please notice the importance of, of, of this uh, role, right? It's like uh, now a passport, in other words. Hmm? Okay, again, after the pilgrims worship at the shrines has been completed, this Kanushi, uh, he is now what he, he called before um, the, uh, what was it? Uh, the Tayu. Hmm? The Tayu is a title. The Kanushi is actually um, uh, uh, the official title of a shrine uh, in intendant, the shrine priest of the Shinto uh, creed, right? <laughs> okay. Um, after the pilgrim's worship at the shrines has been completed, this kanushi uh, hands everybody an indulgence. It is a poor, small square box, the length of a fan or one and a half spans, two inches wide, and the depth of one and a half thumbs made of thin boards tacked together. Inside, it has a bundle of thin, small sticks of the same material and length, some of the clean paper strips tied around. All of it is miserable merchandise purchased for a miserable sum to commend to people that humbleness and purity are virtues esteemed by their gods. A printed piece of paper is pasted on the front of the box. Again, the name of this temple, Daijingu, meaning temple of the great God, is written in beautiful characters. And at the end in small characters is the name of the Kanushi who has issued this Ofarai with the, adult title, with the added title of Tayu, which means ambassador or evangelist, an honorific title commonly used by those serving at Mia. 
Kempfer is obviously uh, um, using uh, vocabulary that uh, comes from his um, um, European background, right? As soon as the pilgrim on foot has received this offerai with the greatest deference, he attaches the same unto his traveling hat over his forehead to pre protect it from the rain. For convenience's sake, a bundle of straw and of the same weight is attached to the other side to, to balance uh, uh, that, right? When people return home with such an offerai, it is kept as a sacred object throughout the year. After that period is over, it is relegated to another honest place as if its potency had evaporated like smoke. Every year, it is put on a board above the height, the height of the man, attached to the wall of a clean room for this purpose, a clean room. In order to render service to those who desire this sacred object and wish to, but cannot travel as described above, the Kanushi from Isie annually send large packs and boxes of this merchandise to the cities and villages of all provinces. It is taken by certain emissaries who arrange their journey so that they reach the most important places at Sangatsu. Uh, this is a mistake by the translator for uh, uh, Shogatsu. The New Year's celebrations, a festival of the most solemn rites of purification. At the same time, they bring almanacs who can be made only by the Mikado and can be printed only at the above location. The envoy gets one mace, roughly about one shilling or 12 pence, about half a pound, or one bu for pieces and sometimes, but rarely more, according to each person's wealth and preference. Okay, this much for uh, Kempfer. On reading this report, I became suddenly aware of how deep rooted the feeling of national identity must have been at the time, even allowing for the fact that Kempfer sees this situation, describes this situation with the eyes of the contemporary European. Uh, Europe is a collection of, of states and different nations already, right? Um, it seems reasonable to assume that the literate, literate strata of society, nurtured on the Chinese classics and ethics, were aware of other countries. You must not forget that you are an archipelago. Hmm? Um, were conscious of living in Japan, a sovereign land and independent civilization. But it is somewhat surprising to learn that something like a patriotic feeling in the words of Kampfer, seemed to infuse down to the common man, for such was mostly composed, uh, uh, for of such was mostly composed the constant stream of pilgrims who traveled on the Tokaido, the great, the great highway above along the seashore between the old and the new capitals. During the two years he stayed in Japan, um, Kempfer's life was confined to the port town of Nagasaki, far down in the southernmost part of the country, more exactly on a small man-made island called Deshima, jutting out into the bay. However, in his quality of physician of the Dutch East India Company, he was called to follow the director on the official mission, the trading post of the, the VOC, the Vereinigte uh, the, uh, Dutch Company, uh, was, applied, was obliged to dispatch to the Shogunul court. In this case, this happened twice in the years 1691 and 62. During his short stay in Batavia before being sent to Japan, Kampfer had amply perused the accounts of the Jesuits, the, the, the accounts the Jesuit missionaries had given of the Japanese people and public life in the few decades before and after 1600, during what is sometimes called the Christian century. Uh, you have noticed the word of indulgence, right? Now, we, if you know the, uh, the, the Christian Reformation in 15th, 16th century, you will know what in his head an indulgence is. Hmm? Okay, to this must be added the personal observations he had occasions to make during his two-year stay on Deshima, 
where notwithstanding the strict confinement to the small compound of slightly more than two acres, he had some contact, however tenuous, with the local town population. His principal informants, however, there as well as on his travels to the capital, can only have been the handful of official interpreters appointed by the government authorities to handle the intercourse with the foreigners. What he has to say about the pilgrims and the pilgrimage to Ise must therefore be considered a first-hand report of what he had witnessed on his two journeys to and from Edo in 1691 and 62. Like most local travelers to and from Ise, the mission had to proceed on the Tokaido, the official highway connecting Edo and Kyoto. Kempfer was a keen observer all right, but he could only have understood the significance of what he saw because it must have been explained to him by his interpreter, one Imamura Genemon, a young man of 20 by that time, who accompanied the delegation all the way from Nagasaki to Edo and back. The German physician gratefully admits that he owes him the greater part of his knowledge of the country. Now I must mention that there is a, um, a Kempfer explains in a footnote that this Imamura Geemon, uh, hardly 20 years old, was the son of a so-called Yamabushi, which is a wandering uh, asset or something, but uh, nevertheless, uh, conversant in the um, uh, in making um, amulets and talismans, right? Which was one of their main uh, uh, um, occupation or, or one of their main jobs, actually. Okay, Isa is quite a distance away from the Tokaido and lay therefore off the authorized itinerary of the Dutch delegation to the capital. So the, the campfire hasn't seen Isa. So all his, what he says now comes from what he has heard and in connection with the pilgrims he sees on, on the highway. Um, he later resumed what he had seen and heard on this matter in the history of Japan in chapter four of book three, devoted to the Sangha or pilgrimage to Isie, which is our source here, which I quoted from, right? Sangha is undoubtedly a mistake again for Sangu. Uh, um, me, I'm uh, uh, going to Ise um, uh, on the pilgrimage. Um, even though the facts therein described to go back to the 1690s, some 330 years ago, we can trust the veracity of campus report because as we shall see, nothing has essentially and little formally changed to this day, which is the reason I have cited him in detail. Mm -hmm. Here we are specifically interested in what Kempfer calls the Ofarai. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yes. Okay. Uh, the uh, from other sources, we know that in the 17th century, still the uh, ha uh, or the, the some of the vowels were um, f were uh, more voiced than it is now. So this is probably um, um, quite good um, uh, translation or transliteration of what he heard at the time. Mm -hmm. um, okay. From native sources, we know that it was only known as Oharai Taima, or among the common people as Oharai San. The stem of the word here is Arau, hmm? uh, standing for everything related to the intrinsically Japanese notion of purity, purification. Hmm? Um, Basically, it applies to the act of purifying or an exorcism, harai, uh, or exorcising the surrounding space and everything therein, cleansing it of all contamination, harmfulness, pollution, 
unwholesomeness that affects indistinctly the body and the mind, the material and the spiritual real. Hmm? Now, um, uh, there is no, uh, there is, there are of course notions of 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 uh, the contrary of dirt or whatever, but uh, we are completely now in in a, in a mind. Um, how do you say? It? In a state of mind that takes uh, purity. Uh, is uh, pure things are. Uh, of different conception. White is pure, and as you can see uh, afterwards, uh, there are uh, um, other um, uh, elements that is contained in this concept, right? It designates the ritual. Yes, I just said that. And in our um, um, context, the harai, Okay, this is the the instrument uh, for puri the, the, the in Shinto used for purification, but it is also called oharai. The same thing as uh, the the uh, talisman we are talking about, right? Then uh, next one. Okay, uh, here you see it again. Um, if you can read the, the, down the uh, Jingu, Oharai Taima. Hmm? So there are two uh, uh, different uh, concepts, in uh, three different concepts in the word Oharai, right? Purification as a ritual, the ritual itself, and the the uh, an instrument that serves in the ritual, and in the last instance, the uh, the uh, talisman as such. Um, the talisman of Ise is more specifically, though not exclusively, known as Taima, which Kempfer likens, as had already done the missionaries a century before, to the indulgence of European Reformation fame. The term actually derives from the implement consisting of a wand. Uh, we can you right the uh, what you see on 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 the right on in in this case uh, the, um, the the paper streamers attached to a wand to a stick in this case. Hmm? Um, the term actually derives from the implement consisting of a wand with paper pans at uh, attached called Onusa, alternatively pronounced Taima and Kohe. So you see this immense um, confusion of uh, different things that go under the same name. Huh? Of course, you don't follow here uh, the the, um, the 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 uh, the Chinese characters, the sinograms. Huh? You ha you have a, a Japan a purely Japanese world um, a word um, appended to it, so to say. Okay. Already at home um, in Nagasaki, that means Kempfer is bound to have noticed and probably also inquired about what he describes as a poor, small, square box, the length of a fan or one and a half spans, two inches wide, and the depth of one and a half thumbs made of thin boards tacked together. Inside, it has a bundle of thin, small sticks of the same material and length, some with clean paper stri strips tied around. This... Um, the old one you see is. Yes. Hmm? This corresponds, in fact, to one of the two basic forms by which the Ise talisman has been known throughout the pre-modern period and to a lesser degree up to our own times. The talisman itself consists of the thin sticks contained in the wooden box, like the one we uh, see here. In, in the, uh, on the right side, you see a very thin stick inside, right? On, um, sorry. Okay, 
so the talisman uh, itself consists of a th of a thin uh, of, of thin sticks contained in the wooden box, like the one here. Hence the name of Hakko Fuda, so talisman in a box, right? A rather technical term, but which adequately describes what it actually is and looks like, a boxed talisman. The Isetaima is rarely seen in this form today, but we know from a practitioner of the rural Shugendo cult of Northeastern Japan, a scholar and high-ranking Yamabushi himself, that this type of Ofuda was still manufactured and distributed in, in the area of the three holy mountains of Deva, the Deva Sansan, in the uh, Yamagata prefecture in the 1970s. And if we judge from his indications, the measures given by Kempfer of a box of about 13 and a half inches, some 35 centimeters long, two inches, five centimeters wide, and almost as steep, uh, approximately four point uh, four and a half centimeters, have not significantly changed over the three centuries. Neither has the material of which it is made, the thin talisman sticks being of cypress wood, of hinoki, while the container is made of thinly plain sheets of approximately two to three millimeter thick pine wood glued or tacked together with thin bamboo nails. The box itself is nothing more than a receptacle, a kind of shrine containing the talisman, properly speaking. Between three to five centimeters deep, it was not only a rather voluminous object to carry, but also quite fragile, which explains the custom of carrying it tied under the pilgrim's hat, counterbalanced with uh, some other things in the back. It was there, well protected, and most of all, in the most honorable position, raised above the head. Rather cumbersome and fragile, the Hakofuda appears to have been paralleled by a variant called the Koppa Fuda, which is what you see on the far right, in which the timer was laid down between two fine shingles, Koppa, in other words, um, wood shavings thus taking in much less space and being easier to carry. Thick or flat, the wooden object was in either case wrapped in a paper envelope inscribed with the name of the deities of Ise and their respective shrine. For example, the Dai Chingu or the uh, uh, Toyo uh, Uke, um, uh, the Geku. Hmm? The talisman itself consists in this case of a bundle of two or more, uh, yes, you see it here um, in the right again, on the far right again. Mm? The bundle of two or more thin sticks of cypress wood tied together with a white paper strip around the top. The stick and the paper strips attached may be considered to be an elementary representation of the traditional purification implement called onusa or onusa, uh, they're both uh, uh, pronunciations are possible. The wooden band with the white paper streamers attached is waved left and right by the priest as he performs the purification ritual called oharai, which you remember, uh, which is in turn uh, another name for the talisman. With this purification rite, of cleansing the here and now, the space around and the assistance within, we touch one of the basic elements of, of the Shinto worldview, the characteristically Japanese notion of purity that participates of the essence of Shinto. It is incarnated here in the cypress wood, in the white paper or in the hemp cloth, asa, or also pronounced ma, both in their natural color called white, but which is not really white, but it simply means not dyed, right? The, tame, the name Taima, the Sino-Japanese reading of the two Sainograms, derives from the fact that it was originally not paper that was attached to the band, but strips of hemp cloth, like in, in, in the one you just, uh, can you go back? Yes, okay. Which brings us to the other, the now common style of Oharai, known by the name of Ise or Chingu Taima. 
It basically comes in three types, named on account of their physical form or material substance. One is shaped like the tip of a sword and uh, is therefore uh, called ken, parai, ken the sword, right? Harai uh, in the sword shaped. The other variant is of the rectangular or four cornered shaped called kaku barai. Kaku is a corner, so uh, uh, what is important here is the right corners, right? It is made up of right corners, so to say. So a kaku barai. The third type is a simple white paper, white paper slip bearing the name of the deity or of the sanctuary. Uh, which is called kami barai, kami uh, is paper, right? So in other words, uh, um, purification uh, at the at talisman made of uh, consisting in paper, of paper. The talisman as such consists either in the old type wooden stick, in the more recent wooden tablet, or of the inscription of the deity's name, usually endorsed by the sanctuary's vermilion seat. The talisman itself or its container are wrapped in a white paper envelope inscribed on the face with the name of the deity and or of the sanctuary, which amounts to the same thing since the shrine and the place are consubstantial with the deity they host. With the industrial age, the handmade model has given way to the mass-produced product, now made of a more or less thick wooden tablet of the same proportions, rectangular or sword tip shaped. But what turns the material substance, the wooden tablet, into a talisman, what empowers it, so to say, is the deity immanent in and therefore identical with the name and the title inscribed on the tablet. In otherwise, the inscription is the one thing that empowers uh, the key, the the the, the um, wood tablet to become a talisman. Right? It is the active principle. In it. Um, the hako or the kopa type would be the one that the pilgrim going to easy in a personal capacity or as a delegate of his home community would have taken back to his place of origin. The sticks were supposed to be pieces of the timber of the inner and the outer shrines, said since antiquity to have been freshly rebuilt every 20 years. Cyprus is the construction material that becomes available for this purpose as the old buildings give way to totally new but identical structures erected on the same ground and using trees from the same domainial forest reserve in the Kiso district now in Nagano prefecture. Mm -hmm. uh, all uh, wood of uh, used in Ise or, or whatever uh, comes from these um, uh, reserves for the uh, from the Cypress forests in in this area. The simple tablet or paper strip inscribed with name and style is by the far the most common type than as now. It is in this form that the Isetima reaches the households of the country towards the end of the year. Like practically all talismans and amulets of this kind, its validity corresponds to the natural cycle of the four seasons and must therefore be replaced with a new one for the year to come. This is absolutely common in Japan of all what we call these ofuda talismans and amulets. Um, uh, they are valid the cycle of four seasons, right? They, everything in in this kind of um, um, uh, again one of the essential uh, Shinto notions is probably that it must be new because new is clean from the beginning right and as it goes over one year it takes on uh, pollution and dust and whatever right which must be again uh, um, uh, exercised away. So, um, um, which you will see, this is very important. This fact that it has to be uh, renewed every year is very important from another point of view. 
Um, now, ideally, every household as the basic element of the nation, uh, we, uh, Japan, like uh, many uh, uh, countries, still now uh, uh, reckon in households rather than individuals, right? So all uh, the number, uh, the, the, the quantities we're going to cite are households. Hmm? Every household as a basic element of the nation should have an isetaima in the house and there pay reverence to the tutelary deity of Japan. The notion of deity of Ise is for the inquisitive and analytically inclined Western mind, Western mind a conglomerate of elements difficult to apprehend as a whole. The first problem arises when we try to find a translation for kami, to which the closest we come in a Western language would be deity, the least gendered and semantically limited term we can find, even though in this particular case, the kami of Ise is represented in gender and depiction as a female. The deity also has a dual aspect, combining in one and the same idea, the god is named Amaterasu Omikami, the great deity shining in the sky, in the heavens, and Toyuke Omikami, the deity of fertility and abundance in nature. And indeed, what is called the Ise Grand Shrine, the Ise Dai Jingu, uh, consists of an inner shrine, the Naiku, uh, dedicated to the great heaven shining deity, who is also styled ancestress of the imperial house, the Kotai. Mm -hmm. you see here, but that's another matter we'll hear about later. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and the third one, uh, to the outer shrine. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Kota, yes, I, um, uh, I, I think I have a very good um, uh, term in English of what in this case means the ancestress of the imperial line. Uh, it's in other words, it's the founder of the house of Japan. Mm. Uh, as you know, the, the uh, imperial house of Japan has no what we call first name or family name, right? <laughs> the family name is Japan. So. Um, okay. Both of them are facets uh, of the same essence of the supreme and tutelary deity of Japan. Now, uh, Amaterasu Omikami is the Uji Gami of Japan, right? Uji being the clan or the so uh, a so a social group, or in this case, going as far as nation, probably. Hmm? Of the land, of the people, and of the nation. As such, the Ise Shrine is at the apex of a pyramid of minor shrines that follow the administrative structure of the nation from the provinces or prefectures to the, distinct, uh, to the districts and down to the village shrines housing the tutelary deity of the local community. Something like in the Christian church in Europe with its center in Rome and the network of local parishes, parish churches all over the territory. Hmm? There are basically two way, uh, ways we now come to the distribution of it. Uh, there are basically two ways by which the Isetaima, like the charm of a few other major sanctuaries, reaches the worshippers throughout the country. Uh, what I'm going to say uh, about the distribution system is also the same for Kumano, for example, or the Usa uh, Hachiman. Mm -hmm. uh, we will see about that. The first, the one Kempfer himself met with and described, he, uh, describes here, is through the intervention of the pilgrim who makes his way to Ise in person to procure the coveted talisman on the spot for his own good or on behalf of the other members of the home community. In other words, there are two ways, one you heard about before. It is um, uh, the duty of the patriot, so to say, of the, the Japanese fields, um, uh, obliged to at least once in his life go uh, to Ise. Hmm? Um, and um, 
he also can go there as a deputy by his village community. Uh, so they send him to Ise on a special errand or something like that and pay, uh, by, uh, um, uh, pay for his uh, journey. Mm? Okay. But as a rule, the Oharai was distributed to the country's households through the agency of a body of semi-religious ministers, families of low-ranking priests directly attached to the Ise shrine. Kempfer says that these agents were known as, I quote, Kanusi, uh, with the added title of Tayu, which means ambassador or evangelist, an horrific title commonly used by those serving at Mia, Mia being the Shinto shrine. Up to the early 1870s, some major shrines and temples of the country, like Kumano and again Iwashimizu uh, Hachimangu, the Hia Jinja also, had such missionaries in their permanent and usually uh, hereditary service, but they were mo more uh, widely uh, addressed with the title of Oshi. Uh, master or guide, which is difficult uh, to find an appropriate word, which in the case of those affiliated to the Ise shrine turned into the more honorific Onshi. Now this, um, uh, I, I wouldn't guarantee that it actually was, uh, they were all called Onshi at the time, but it is now theoretically uh, um, of course, um, uh, it looks good if um, that uh, these people, these particular onshi would have been distinguished from the other lower ones by a honorific on uh, instead of a no, right? Okay. Most of them resided in the neighboring villages of Uji, uh, of Ise, of course. Uji, Yamada, Miya, Tamaki, Watarai, and others. Their role was to act as intermediate, intermediaries between the shrine and their respective parishes, their Danaba, so to say, dispersed of the rural and ur urban areas of the country. In Ise, they served their parishioners, so the Danka that came on pilgrimage, as guides, spiritual as well as touristic, accompanying them on the rounds of the sanctuaries and advising them on ritual procedures. Uh, of the sanctuaries is plural here because there are some 160 odd sanctuaries uh, diff of different size and importance affiliated uh, uh, in the neighborhood uh, among themselves, affiliated in the neighborhood of Ise, mm -hmm. of the, the main shrine. The role was to act as intermediaries between the shrine and their respective parishes dispersed over the country. In Ise, they served their parishioners as guide, uh, I already said, but also uh, they provided food and accommodation under their roof for the pilgrims during their sojourn in Ise. All this against the modest, modest but appropriate consideration is the word Camphor uses, a small price, hmm? a small part of which went as a tribute to the shrines, the rest providing for their families' livelihood, for the, the Kanushis or the Taiyus' livelihood, right? And of course, the shrine uh, um, uh, takes uh, quite a percentage of this, which, uh, which is to uh, a large part uh, the, 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 uh, the livelihood the shrine is living on. Hmm? Um, this being said, among their numerous professional occupations, the one that interests us in particular is the production and distribution of the Oharai. As I have just mentioned, the hundreds of Onchi families settled around Ise subsisted on the services rendered to their parishioners to whom they attended generation after generation, often on a hereditary charge. 
their main, uh, besides taking care of the individual pilgrims during their visit to the sanctuary, their main function was to provide their parishes, in addition to the Ise Taima, with the new Ise Goyomi, the almanac or calendar issued by the shrine. Uh, we, we, we already passed. Um, yes. Yes, there is. Okay, there's the, the, the next one is there. Okay. Sorry, now going backwards. Okay. This oh, yes, here is the Goyomi. This is the Ise Goyomi we talk about, right? right. The 23. The almanac or calendar issued by the shrine. Um, for this distribution to the to the countryside, um, the um, onshi um, towards the year personally made the round of their beat to their uh, danaba or navabai, as uh, some call it. So it was that the kanushi from Ise sent an, uh, 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 annually sent large packs and boxes of this uh, merchandise to the cities and villages of all the provinces. It is taken by certain missionaries who arrange their journey so that they reach the most important places at Shogatsu, the New Year celebration, a festival of the most solemn rites of purification. So because after Sh Shogatsu, um, after Shogatsu, the new um, um, uh, talisman uh, uh, becomes active, right? It's new, in other words. At the end of the Edo period, according to a reasonable estimate, there were no less some than eight, some 800 Onshi families plying their trade in the towns of Uji and Yamida alone, and about 80% of the country's households are supposed to have had a noharai under their roof. So um, 800 Onshi families, um, I think there was one before. Yes, here. Uh, that this is the Onji, and this, the uh, these families had around Ise this kind of hostel, uh, where the pilgrims uh, stayed over three or four days and um, had uh, were uh, served food, and uh, the master of the house guided them uh, for on the um, uh, uh, the rituals. Uh, and uh, among the important shrines around Ise, hmm? against a small uh, um, uh, fee, I suppose. Hmm? I very much, uh, where was it, appreciated um, Kempfer's and apparently also the English um, term of uh, what did I say, Peter? You remember the, the huh? Consideration. A consideration, right. <laughs> do, do you still use now? Uh, yes. yes? yes. <laughs> okay. I'll do anything for you for small consideration. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, for purely uh, practical reasons, it was hardly possible to send or carry hundreds of the voluminous and fragile hakofu down their journey of several weeks to the country or city parishes, nor could they have manufactured them on the spot. It was easier to transport quantities of the flat and light oharai of sticks in a paper envelope, or indeed produce them as the circumstances required on demand for specific occasions, such as, for example, in the case of this particular charm, the purification ritual performed for a man at the critical age, what you call the yakudoshi, hmm? uh, for someone born in the ushinotoshi in the year of the ox. You can read that uh, down there. Uh -huh. um, uh, what was it again? Gon negi, uh, something I have translated somewhere here. Uh, oh yes, okay. Watarai no Kanushi. So Watarai is one of the uh, neighboring towns of of uh, Ise, and uh, is called Kanushi here. But um, uh, also these Onshi 
uh, also have usually or had or even now after their um, f uh, uh, first name, they had the title of Taiyu, right? In Kapukiyu, uh, often here, Daiyu, or uh, it's a, an official rank also, right? Um, the following Chingu Taima, uh, quite likely dating from the 1860s and found in a house situated in a remote area of central Japan, where I did my field work. Well, illustrate Kempfer's, uh, which means Kenyamon's description of the state of things when he writes, the name of this temple, Daijingu, meaning temple of the great God, is written in beautiful characters. And at the end, in small characters, is the name of the Kanushi who has issue, issued this Ofarai with the added title of Tayu, which means ambassador or evangelist, an honorific title uh, commonly used by those serving at the Mia, serving in Ise. Hmm? Indeed, the name we find at the bottom of this Oharai time of the inner shrine on the right tells us that it has been issued by one Onshi of the junior fifth rank, Osaki Nobutoki, priest from Watarai. Um, this also uh, shows you that Ise is um, uh, considered as an imperial shrine, so the priests uh, had uh, official ranks, right? The uh, the onshi of the junior fifth rank. Hmm? The point that interests us most, however, is the statement that the Jingu Taima could be accepted as a free pass. We are going back to what um, uh, um, uh, Kempfer had to say, in place of the official passport. Every traveler was indeed obliged to carry a paper certificate or a wooden tablet, a tegata, issued by the authority of the place of residence, stating the, the pilgrim's identity purpose and destination of travel. Failing to produce this document at the checkpoints of the major uh, thoroughfares could bring people into considerable trouble to the point of risking their lives, as Kempfer had also been taught, which uh, I don't know if uh, uh, it would be true, but in all the movies, uh, the Jedi movies we see now, it seems to have been the case, right? <laughs> um, Without a regular tegata, the outlaw could only try to bypass the barrier, but if caught, risked being put to death. Even if it is likely to have been exceptional, the talisman seems to have been held by the inspectors in enough esteem to let the easy pilgrim through on its face alone. The talisman meant that its bearer was a follower of the native deities, that he revered the kami, and foremost, the supreme Amaterasu, the tutelary day of Japan. In other words, as Kampfer says, that he was a patriot. He doesn't seem to know, however, that there was an even more important reason for the authorities' indulgence, uh, in the different sense this time, that there was an, um, uh, carrying this talisman proved that the bearer to be proved the bearer to be a true Japanese a believer in the native gods and therefore not one of those heretic Christians whom the control of the berries were destined to uncover, actually. Hmm? Uh, which is very um, important in so far as um, uh, there's another very typical um, uh, uh, characteristic of of, uh, of the Japanese mind in this case is that um, even the Christians uh, they could of course have had um, uh, a talisman as such, right? But in the Japanese mind, this is not just not that this does not occur in anybody's mind to cheat in this way, right? You do not cheat. So there's absolute trust in this kind of, of, of uh, thing. Um, 
Okay. With the absolute value of representing, of even incarnating the supreme and founding deity of Japan, the tutelary kami of the country and its population, the Tingu Taima is indeed nothing less than a symbol and tangible proof of what, me, of what may be called Japaneseness. Worship, worshipping at the Ise Shrine in person, or worshipping, worshipping, sorry, the kami through the talisman at home was an act of gratitude and homage to the quote, God and founder of this nation. Even the Buddhists emphasizes Kampfer because they wished to, to claim the right to be called honest patriots, visit this place of their founder once or several times in their lives. Available data indicate that at least as far as the men are concerned, to go to Ise at least once in the life was no empty word. The timer takes on a new dimension with the Meiji Restoration. When Ise becomes the axis of the new nation, the focal point of the trinity of the sun goddess, the emperor and the state. Ise had, of course, always counted as um, the ancestral shrine of the imperial house, but in the newly created Shinto, this became a fundamental ideological tenet or element of the conception of Japan as a divine nation of a living organism with the emperor at its head. The system of distribution, which had lasted throughout the Edo period, took an end officially at last, at least in 1871, in the transformation process of the cult of Ise into a quasi-national or state religion. In its wake, the status and professional occupation of Onji was dissolved as the Meiji government department of matters divine, the Jingi Khan, took control of the cult of Ise over its ideological, ritual, as well as administrative aspects. Now, the Onji, um, uh, they don't fit into this concept of uh, the state, uh, which goes directly from Ise to the emperor and um, has to be taken into the hands uh, the emperor as well as, um, well, uh, theoretically at least, um, as the Ise shrine into the hands of the government. Right. We are now, uh, the state Shinto is building up, right? Uh, we are in, in, the, um, uh, in, in, in the process of uh, nation building or, or something like this, right? Politically as well as, um, okay, socially at least. In actual fact, the Taima was to play an important role in the organization of a loose ensemble of native beliefs, deities, and local shrines into a coherent structure and ideology initially called the Great Teaching. Uh, you, in the development of Shinto, uh, you know that um, what uh, Shinto lacked uh, before the Meiji period was a teaching in the or uh, uh, in the same way, in the same um, uh, uh, way, it existed in in Christianity or on most other religions. But in Shinto, nothing like this existed before. Hmm? So uh, the the government, first government department, was uh, created the Taikyo, uh, the great teaching. In creating what was to be gradually turned into state Shinto, the ideologists of the enlightened government realized early, realized early on its potential as a national symbol. The newly formed Ministry of Divinity, the Jingi Shou, lost no time in turning it into an instrument of statecraft. It was conceived of and produced as a tangible support through which to worship Ise and the Japanese nation with the aim of uniting the people in a common body and creed. The first step in this endeavor, endeavor was to do away with the Onshi, the traditional intermediaries between the Ise shrine and the population at large. The professional activity of which the distribution of the talisman was the mainstay was outlawed in 1871. 
the common name of Oharai Taima was changed into Chingu Taima. Uh, you will notice uh, the, uh, the question of purification, which was at the same time uh, a professional um, uh, term for the, the Onshi or for the, uh, uh, the people at the time, was the Oharai um, question, the ritual, is now ousted also um, in favor of um, uh, the, the shrine. Hmm? It is not the Oharai timer, but it is now the Jingu timer or the Ise timer. Hmm? And it is controlled by, um, the, by a government office. <clears throat> the shrines which adapt to the Meiji Restoration led an autonomous existence were declared state establishments and organized in, into a pyramidal structure with a grand shrine of Ise at the apex, presiding over a network of prefectural and district establishments, which in their turn had authority over a myriad of village and hamlet shrines forming the basis of kami worship. In 1872, what had in the meanwhile become the Kyobusho, now the, the element uh, in stage into the, the element of kyo or shiru, that means going outwards on the mission, uh, evangelizing uh, the people is uh, coming in, uh, in 72. Decla the Kyobisho declared, the taima of the imperial grand shrine is now to be issued by the Ise shrine office and distributed to all prefectural and provincial administrations. The same does not apply to the distributions of charms from other shrines. An adequate way must be found so that the whole population within the seas receives it every year and that everyone not only strives to welcome, but also to revere it. Hmm? Okay. Um, uh, you will also notice that uh, talismans from other shrines, which also carry the, the name of Taima, they are uh, they're not in question. Uh, they, it's completely out, right? Uh, the uh, Ise um, cult is at the axis. Um, from 1872 on, the Jingu Taima was issued by the successive organs of the Shinto administration, from 1873 by the Jingu Kyo-in, the Institute of Teaching again, from 1899 by the Jingu Hosai-kai, which is a, a sub-governmental um, organization, from 1927 by the Zenkoku Jin-soku-kai, the uh, association of the, the, the shrine priests, and ever since 1946, after the war, by the Central Shrine Office, the Jinja Honcho, which is uh, no, um, uh, which is neither a government um, institution um, and not really uh, on the other side a pure Shinto institution, even though it becomes out. It comes out to the same, but this we will see a little bit later, uh, is uh, because uh, Shinto is at this time um, propounded as a civic creed and not a religious creed. Right? Okay. It was then delivered to the provincial institutions, the timer, the, the Jingu timer, to the provincial institutions. Uh, which were then uh, called the Chu, the mid, uh, medium, and Shou uh, Kyoin, the, small, the med medium and small uh, uh, teaching institutes on the prefectural and district level, through which it filtered down to the base of the village shrines, the Sonsha, for example, the local priest in the service of the tutelary deus of the village community, the Ujigami, finally distributed it to his uh, parishioners. So in other words, all the finance uh, goes down to the uh, pure uh, Shinto uh, organization. Hmm? 
So we're close to the time limit. Okay. Uh, uh, apologies. Okay. The hierarchical system of the Shinto shrines from the Isichingu down to the lowest level of the up. Uh, uh, okay, I can leave this out. Um, to welcome, in other words, to obtain Mukau, hmm? the, uh, this uh, taima in every household and worship it twice a day, was declared in 1871 a civil and patriotic duty. Hmm? But by uh, 1878, a new decree of the Ministry of the Interior left its pur purchase up to the individual choice. In actual fact, some of the more purist Buddhist sects, like the powerful Jodo Shinshu, for example, or the Omoto Kyo, rejected such worship on doctrinal grounds, and forcing it upon them would have created inadmissible discord on the patriotic front. Right? The Jingu Taima or Uise San takes up, uh, uh, we can, okay. Um, the identity of Ise and Japan, of the people and the organic state, of the sun goddess and the emperor, became the principal tenet of the way of the gods, the Shinto, as a national ideology. And as national identity focused even more on Ise, the Taima became its material symbol the tangible certificate of Japaneseness. There was hardly no need for a law to have everybody accept the Shingu Taima as a symbol of national identity. So the, the statistics are sufficiently telling in this respect. Already in 1777 in Anne uh, uh, Rokunen, according to a survey of the outer shrine, the number of parishioners nationwide had reached some 4,380,000 some uh, thousand ho households. In other words, Ise talismans were being distributed to 89% of all families of the country at the time. The number declined somewhat towards the end of the Meiji period, roughly 5 million units being given out in 1919. But the 1930s saw a very significant increase going up by 1 million yearly between 1937 and 1943, when 13,085,000 uh, taima were diffused in the Japanese islands alone, which represented 60, uh, 90, 96 of all, uh, percent of all the households. To this must be added a further four uh, million and some million, uh, further some million units that went to the Japanese population of the outlying territories, what was called the Gaichi at the time, meaning Chosen, Korea, Taiwan, the Ryukyus, Manchuria, Sakhalin, Hawaii, and the Pacific Islands, altogether well exceeding 17 million. For propaganda purposes, these figures might have been somewhat exaggerated. But even in the post-war years, in 1965, for example, when the national consciousness and territorial expansion were at their lowest, still almost uh, 6.8 million talismans were distribute, distributed, of which about 10,000 to Hawaii. The year 1990, 1992 marked the 120th anniversary of the Meiji government, taking the Ise Taima under its control. And during that year, the number of charms handed out uh, reached 9.253 uh, um, uh, units. The plan was to reach 10 million by the end of the 20th century. This was announced by the Jinja Honcho. It was one of their uh, aims. If there is ample reason to take Kampfer's view of the Ise Taima with a grain of salt, there cannot be any doubt, however, that the religious authorities of the present day Japan regard it as nothing less than a symbol of national identity in identifying the two Japanese. This is unmistak unmistakably what the Office of the Grand Shrine, the official organ of the Association of, for the Worship of the Ise Jingu, claims in its online presentation. You, uh, uh, no, uh, okay. Uh, there's a link. Um, okay, but I, I can't give it to you here. It is a fact that the spread of the Taima, the charm of the Ise Shrine, by its ministers had been instrumental 
in implanting the worship of Ise uh, all over the country to a point where at the end of the AD period, 90% of all families had enshrined it in the house and paid reverence to it. Entering the area of the enlightened government, the distribution system of the Qingwu time was optimized. And thanks to the August grace of the Meiji emperor, his people have thus become able to revere the August radiance of the omnipresent and boundless August goddess. His, uh, what, what this, um, uh, the, the, the last uh, sentence, uh, but a very important sentence, his majesty, the emperor's ritual being the same as the shrine ritual, has its parallel in the Japanese people's worship of the shrine, so that the whole system accounts to a beautiful unity of sovereign and subject in the state, being thus an expression of the permanent ethnical solidarity, the Jingu Taima must be considered as having a public character that transcends all individual religious affiliation. Okay. Thank you for listening to the end. <laughs> Thank you very much for a very detailed and very in-depth presentation. I think there's, there's a, a lot to uh, discuss a lot to talk about, especially in the last sort of the last <laughs> leading up to suddenly where we have this unity um, of of material object and and nation state almost. But I think as somebody who is very interested in, in material culture and the the circulation of objects, I thought it's very interesting to see in this idea of newness and purification that started all out a kind of uh, a proto. Um, consumerist attitude, so to speak, with its renewal every year, which sort of creates a larger circulation of objects that then takes on this national aspect. Yes. And uh, I think that's really something that... Uh, yes, but um, as I very uh, briefly pointed out, uh, in the Japanese mind, uh, this dimension is non-existent. It does not. It does not mean because you have to re 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 uh, renew it every year. You have to buy a new one. You can earn money, which is a, a kind of capitalist, uh, uh, or let's say typically um, uh, Western um, basis of uh, reasoning. Right. I was um, uh, just to to uh, mention this very shortly. Um, a few times I gave um, a conference in Japan and uh, on on talismans and amulets on Ofuda, and I always uh, had um, mentioned the price. Now every time I said, "Okay, this and this uh, Ofuda now costs eight hundred and fifty yen," um, the audience was starting to laugh because this was not. The, pri the price of uh, uh, Nofuda is just not what uh, is in the mind of, of the Japanese. If it costs a price, the price is uh, absolutely justified insofar as uh, you, um, um, the uh, the favors uh, a deity or whatever uh, does to you um, needs uh, a compensation, right? It needs to be re retributed. So it is totally um, uh, normal that some, something uh, costs something. But um, Kempfer also, uh, I was uh, remarking this, Kempfer is the one uh, to uh, have asked for the price, how much does it cost? Right. So he uh, states at one time uh, the uh, this object is of a, a miserable price and uh, of miserable quality, etc., uh, etc. Et so he has uh, this uh, value, uh, a monetary value system in mind, or a merchant. Uh, uh, huh? Sorry. No, no, not at all. But it is sold, right? I, I'll open to the floor. I think this is a discussion that, uh, yes, we've had um, before. So please, questions from the floor. Yes, thank you. Thank you for such a um, wonderful um, talk. Uh, it was 
Um, my name is Fatia, and I'm, um, I'm also doing a uh, Shinto Buddhist. Uh, right. Um, mm. I had, um, from your talk, I kind of get the feeling that um, you said um, Oharai Taima was such a private thing rather than public thing, um, based on the um, Oharai by individual priest and Oshin, Oshin. And then after Meiji uh, Reformation and um, Restoration, the Meiji government sort of picked it up as national symbol and mm -hmm. made it public thing. I was wondering um, why, specifically why did they chose this rather private thing to symbolize national and identity, if you have any um, idea of sort of um, no, then, then um, I'm afraid uh, I haven't been clear enough. It's not a private uh, element, the Oharai. Hmm? Uh, the Oharai is properly done, uh, can properly be done only by a priest or or, or whatever. So it has a, um, a quality of, of, of something that uh, allows him to handle um, of course, if he handles in a purification ceremony uh, an instrument of purification, he himself must be pure, right? So uh, um, uh, a Shinto priest is a pure person, so to say. Right? I was just saying the private eye was, um, the term private eye was, was like, um, or she was kind of inviting um, the dancer in the house and then did the purification everything in the house mm. rather than in the shrine. So I was like, not necessarily, but um, uh, the Ise shrine, um, all I'm talking of the grand shrine, right? Which now involves, uh, um, uh, okay, that is not important. Uh, the Ise shrine. Um, you do not, you can, uh, first of all, the difference of most other ones, you cannot go inside. You stay outside because it's a space of absolute purity that every uh, thing from without uh, would um, stain, so to say. Huh? So um, you, you don't do a purification at the shrine itself. But you get purified at the guide's house because uh, that gives you, uh, puts you in the proper mind to visit the Isa shrine, right? So uh, in this case, it's, it's not a private element at all. It's uh, quite to the, to, to the contrary. Thank you. Yes, please. Hi, thank you very much for the talk, Chuck. Just having some curiosity regarding, um, for example, seeing on the screen now, the house of Porto. So we kind of learned a little bit about how is this to be the, uh, how is um, sort of kind of a public discourse as part of a governmental uh, institution. I would say, but just wondering how would the household organize activity regarding this time up? Uh, will be some, are there any important rituals that all of that need? considerations or attitudes towards in the household? Um, first of all, these things have... Uh, you're not Japanese, are you? <laughs> okay, these are always... Uh, the Kempfer also says at least twice that they must be above the head, right? They are, he also says, they are in a clean room of every household. Right? So it's usually the, uh, I don't know, the Osetsuma or whatever, or the, uh, huh? the, the best room in, in the house. And it is on uh, what to call a gold, uh, a god shelf is really a house shrine. So it is enshrined there. Huh? Now, again, uh, this disposition of the different elements in there are subjected to rules. The Isetaima is always in the middle, of course. Huh? And uh, to um, his left, then, is uh, either the Toyu Kezo, the, the, the uh, talisman of the, uh, the outer shrine, 
or the uh, usually the um, talisman of the local of one's village of the place where one's lives the tutelary deity uh, and on the right side it can be uh, the talisman of uh, some shrine or place uh, where the house hold uh, uh, has feels to have a special um, uh, uh, function uh, of a special relation for example, immigrants uh, to Hokkaido who came from Shikoku had the, uh, the um, uh, what's his name again? The great uh, sanctuary of uh, Shikoku and uh, for, for the tradesmen and sailors. And, uh, 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 Kompilasa. Hmm? Okay, so they, they, they will have um, uh, uh, an amulet or a talisman of the Kompiosan on the right, because it is connected with their origin, for example. Or, uh, now, these are the, the, the main rules, right? Um, also, of course, you have, uh, you feed these entities, so to say. You, they are treated like uh, uh, we all. Uh, uh, irrespective of their uh, body or form or, or what they are uh, they live in the same world so they behave in the same way uh, they are of the same essence so to say does that answer to to some degree the, hmm? it's not just even though now um, they are uh, you know these things uh, change of course they they must be uh, some uh, uh, some people, the children might even put on uh, avatar cards or whatever on the. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, yes, uh, but one thing also I, I uh, forgot to told you is that uh, since the eighties, the um, distribution, the the numbers are uh, severely decreasing. Hmm? Um, uh, nowadays, uh, I think there must be about um, uh, not even close to five million, uh, at least uh, to half to what um, uh, it was supposed to be in, in the year 2000. Uh, one of the main elements is the breakdown of the family system. Uh, the, uh, the Japanese have less and less children. And uh, of course, a household the future of the nation, the nation uh, is only uh, a good household if it has uh, um, a prolongation, uh, if it endures. So um, that's one of the reasons why, uh, for example, or, uh, or uh, people that are not ma uh, married, but stay together in, in the same house, form a household, so to say. Uh, so that's one of the very uh, important reasons for the uh, diminution of uh, uh, of people who who buy this or who uh, have this talisman in their house. Right? Thank you. Any so yes, please over there, and then um, if at the end of the four seasons we are unable to return it to the shrine to help the disposal. Then what should one do with it? Uh, you don't if um, that if you take it to the Easter Shrine, then only when you go on the pilgrimage. Usually, you take it to the local shrine that will burn it. That will take care of it yes. at the end of the year. But if you have left Japan, then... <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> You you don't have less Japan because uh, I'm being uh, funny. I, I, I'm afraid is because at the end of the year this talisman has lost its power. It's not accumulated. No, it just it it just becomes it it just becomes a material object. It's not accumulating. Um, no. It is not a talisman anymore. <laughs> no, it is the the time the time the time unit uh, for this is the year. I understand, but like 
for everything in in pre-modern in pre-modern Japan. Uh, uh, that's it. Uh, in it. <laughs> Thank you. There's more one more question over there. Thank you. Now, the four seasons, the 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 uh, the cycle of the four seasons is a unit in itself, right? It does not go on; it just goes one after the other. In uh, uh, in Japanese, in Japanese, um, there is no future. There's no future tense as we know it, right? And in mythology or, or whatever, in in the, 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 the native creeds, there is no such thing as a last judgment or or or, or uh, apocalypse or, or whatever, right? The future uh, it just goes on uh, cyclically uh, one after the other. They are, every cycle is complete in itself, and um, and that's it. You don't. There is no destination where it it goes. It is not a linear concept of time. Yes, thank you, Peter. Uh, thank you, Jesse. That was. Uh... Wonderful, and it's brought back very many memories, uh, particularly when I was first in Japan in the 70s, and I can remember seeing things like these in houses, um, but of course in modern apartment blocks, um, oh, yeah. there really isn't space to mm. have a kamidana that's going to be above the head, but that's not really what I wanted to do ask, because when you were talking about uh, the development of state Shinto in the early Meiji period, what was coming to my mind was... Uh, a recollection of the diary of the Iwakura mission when they were in Italy and in Russia. And in both cases, uh, Kume, the diarist, uh, wrote that uh, our main impression of uh, seeing the Roman Catholic religion in Rome was that what a useful way this is to control the population. Uh, if you can get it under the state, um, then uh, this will be a very good way to control the Japanese people. And they have exactly the same reaction when they're in, in Russia and they see how the state was closely tied to the organization of the Orthodox faith. Um, is the development of state Shinto closely related to these observations? Of course they are. Okay. There is uh, in the late uh, Kokugaku uh, scholar Ai Aisawa um, Seishisai, Seishisai, Seishisai. Um, he um, realized that what made uh, the the strength of the uh, all these barbarians coming in, hmm, what why they are invincible is because they have a teaching. They have a religion, and this uh, this teaching which was sorely the, the absence was sorely felt uh, in in the Meiji period is uh, what is Shinto right how could we explain it to to uh, um, uh, the foreigners for example the huh? next years before the Iraq mission there are the germs of, of these developments mm. already in the, the Edo period yes 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 yeah. mm. yes yes when they realized that it was, if we want uh, to meet these um, uh, the, the foreign powers invading us on an equal footing, we must uh, fight with the same arms. Huh? Well, he was perfectly right, as astonishingly right, because he had realized that all what has driven uh, um, European civilization was through the religion, it was expansion of um, um, going out and, and um, uh, collecting uh, territory and whatever, right? 
and that uh, the missionary uh, drive in in the Catholic in the Catholic Church is exactly the same uh, um, outgoing um, drive or or um, um, uh, tendency. Right? Thank you. Uh, one last question from oh, Phil. <laughs> Question. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, this is a kind of half-baked observation, I think. You, I think she said at one point near the end, well, maybe you had to cut it out, but the point why this object, why this material object serves this purpose. I mean, obviously, the purpose sort of changes, I think, is part of what you're saying. Why in particular does it serve this purpose, in this politicized purpose, uh, it, as a sort of transmitter of national identity? Uh, and you know, mm. and I and of course part of me is thinking because I'm kind of the uh, um, an anthropologist of religion um, and I'm very sympathetic to what Fabio has also said things that believe he's written about from body is sort of um, these these active object very much the idea your notion of the talisman is an active mm. object rather than a sort of passive thing um, so part of me was thinking well it's it's got to be more than just a sort of transmitter of politics or political effects or national effects and not because mm. he was saying that. Mm. Then, as I was thinking this in my head, it struck, me, it struck me really. It is actually ideal as, as, as an object, portable. It's, it's, it has a built-in obsolescence. It has to be renewed, doesn't it? So, in, in a sense, it is a it's the perfect medium for the kind of for these uh, for, for for sort of um, uh, cultivating sense, you know, national nation states, a statecraft. Uh, yeah, yeah. and it's like having. I mean, forgive me, but it's like you know, Amazon Alexa in your home, as it were. Well. Mm. <laughs> Not just the state, but effectively the, the divine state talking to you. I mean, you know, it's a natural thing. It really, it's intimate. It's a kind of intimate mm. object. Now, what what this uh, talisman has. Um, uh, A reason why it is so deep going is um, we tend it, of course, uh, um, uh, European or Westerners even more than than uh, modern Japanese. We tend to look at it uh, in in a material as a material object um, uh, with a microscope and and looking at, uh, at everything. Um, I think I emphasized a couple of times, but um, undoubtedly not uh, enough, that um, the form already being in an instrument of purification implies um, a space, uh, the, the particularly Shinto and particularly Japanese concept of the world around within which the divine dimension is purity, is pure. This purity is, um, um, this dimension is um, in, 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 in the wood. The, the, the hinoki is, a, is a absolutely beautiful wood, even for, uh, for, for, for anybody. Huh? And uh, moreover, it has a smell. Huh? Uh, of the, the uh, both of them are particularly uh, Japanese things. I mean, I, if I uh, smell some things made made with um, uh, with ultimate craftsmanship with uh, in hinoki or whatever, you have to smell with. Or if you go into a newly uh, built mansion with a, um, a Japanese room, uh, the smell of it is already is Japan. So is the color. Uh, so is uh, um, um, paper. These paper, the papers during the pre-modern period were actually made in ise. It is ise washi. Uh, uh, part of uh, they were not only onji living around uh, ise under uh, watarai etc. Uh, ise yama uji yamada were quite. Uh, uh, Big towns. Huh? They uh, manufactured the calendars, for example. Uh, they were, of course, carpenters. Uh, they were um, washi um, uh, paper makers, uh, um, woodblock printers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, who had the, the, there was a, a whole um, um, uh, a, a merchant town at the same time, and 
uh, so all these ideas of uh, white, I said it, it, it's not white because it's not dyed, it is undyed. Huh? Um, this is also a very particular uh, Japanese thing. Like um, um, you have other elements like the sword tip, for example. Huh? Uh, you have uh, um, uh, things like um, uh, the asa, huh? uh, the, the hemp. Huh? Hemp is another extremely ancient and particularly um, um, significant element in, in, in the Shinto world, right? It symbol in, in it it not only symbolizes it is pristine purity, not dyed, nothing but extremely uh, pleasant and noble to wear, and etc. Uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Huh? Even court people wore uh, um, uh, hemp cloth in some, of course, uh, woven in a particular way, but uh, nevertheless. Thank you very much. I'm afraid we won't have any uh, more time for questions. We have a reservation to make. So thank you very much, Professor Kibbutz, uh, for your talk. Thank you for coming. And do come back in January um, when our first session will be with Professor Eike Rotz from the University of Oslo on Wales of Power. So okay. do come back. Thank you very much. <laughs>